Shabbat shalom, great men of Yahweh. If y'all please stand, we'll go ahead and give honor and glory to Father Yahweh. Great and awesome Father Yahweh, this is your servant, Kohan Kohila Hawkins, coming to you in unity with your body of priests, being in unity with your men here, Father Yahweh, as seeds and servants of your last day's witness, our pastor and overseer, the great Kohan Yisrael Abel Hawkins, and thrown by the authority of our most honorable and righteous high priest, Yahshua our Messiah. Great Father, we do come before you this day thanking you for allowing us to be here at your house on this Sabbath day, Father Yahweh, learning about you, Father, and preparing ourselves, Father, with these teachings to be a part of your family and a part of this eternal administration to bring honor and glory to your name, both now and forever. We pray and ask that you will continue to purify our hearts and our minds and allow us to be mindful of you, Father, Yahweh, so that we can grow together and usher in your soon coming kingdom. We bless you, we thank you, we praise you, and ask all of these things through and by the authority of Yahshua, our Messiah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Men, please be seated. We're going to be continuing in the sixth book of Israel, Believe Without Seeing, and we're going to be in the second half of chapter 10. Okay, the second half of chapter 10, and we're going to be starting on page uh, 103. But uh, on page 98 is the title, <clears throat> and this is Yeshua's Memorial, and this sermon was given 412 in 2006. Okay, 4-12-2006. And so, um, you know how Yeshua's, Yeshua memorials go. Okay, pastor is very serious about these teachings pertaining to the Messiah and how Yeshua lived his life and what he did, you know, in that, that last act of his life for the atonement of our sins. But the one thing that we have to also consider is what he did his entire life to bring forth the teachings of Father Yahweh so that we can know how to live unto Yahweh. Okay, so most people only consider the death, but we're supposed to be considering his life okay, and what he taught. And those are the things that, that we do at Yeshua's memorial with the, the, the bread, the wine, and the foot washing. What it means to be like Messiah, to think like Messiah to conduct ourselves like Yahshua himself. And so this is part of the whole memorial, not just remembering what he went through that night, but the persecution that he endured and the suffering, the mental anguish as he was trying to bring forth the way of Yahweh to people, some wanting to listen and to some who didn't want to listen. And this is the struggle that has been for, for the prophets and the apostles, the men of Yahweh throughout the history of mankind. You know, the resistance to the way of Yahweh. Right? So let's, uh, let's go ahead and pick up, and uh, we're going to go up a little bit to uh, verse 77 here, um, where Pastor starts to read in Isaiah 53, verse 1. It says, Who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? That arm means strength, and it also means mercy. So, what's the strength of Yahweh? the laws and the prophecies and remember Yeshua said you know you err because what you err because you don't know the scriptures nor the power of Yahweh but this is the strength of Yahweh but we make mistakes we make poor choices because we don't know the strength of Yahweh we don't know the scriptures so the problem is the lack of study the lack of getting to know father Yahweh because everything we need to know about Yahweh is what written, written. that's correct what scripture is that Romans 1.20, praise Yahweh, right? Everything we need to know about Father Yahweh is written. So we have to study to show ourselves approved, right? We have to study to show ourselves approved. So this strength, that arm means strength. So who, who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? To whom is the strength of Yahweh revealed, right? To whom will Yahweh teach or instruct in the way of righteousness? Remember, what is that, Isaiah 40? And also, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's, let's, read, let's read in uh, 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. It might be chapter 3. Let's read that. And it says the same thing in, um, I think, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 13 and 14. So, okay, so 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It says, For who will come to know the mind of Yahweh... Who will be instructed by him, but we who have the mind or spirit of Yahweh, right? Who has the mind. And what's another word for spirit? The laws, right? The laws of Yahweh. So you see how all of these things are connected. 
Now, who will be instructed by Yahweh except those who have the same mind or have the same laws of Yahweh that develops the character of Yahweh? And this is one of the things that he said in Genesis 1.26. I will make man like me. How? With my laws. This is how I think. This is how I judge. This is how I consider. Right? These are the things that make men, this is uh, mankind, men, women, and children, this is what make us like Yahweh. Okay, so who has believed our report except those of us who are listening to these teachings, who, who Yahweh calls out of this world, right? So that arm means strength, and it also means mercy. Isaiah 53, verse 2, For he will grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that is glamour about him that we should desire him, right? So he's not rolling up, you know, in a chariot with like gold plated, you know, rims and spokes, you know, Clydesdales or, you know, Arabian horses or anything like that, right? What did you ride in on? <laughs> donkey. Hey, this guy came in on a donkey. Oh, what about this guy over here with like 15 Arabian horses? Surely this guy is the Messiah. Remember, Pastor, he jokes about that kind of stuff like, what, the Messiah had to come down from heaven in an egg or something like that before you can believe the report? Right? Oh, he came out of heaven in an egg. You know, no, the scriptures tell us what to look for. How do we know that pastor is Yahweh's last days anointed witness? Because it's written in the scriptures, men. Right? How do we know Yeshua is the Messiah? It's written in the scriptures. Yahweh tells us what to look for. So we're not looking for this worldly, this worldly beauty. Look at, uh, it says in Isaiah 53, verse 3. He is despised and rejected by men, that is, by worldly men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. All the things, all the things you've suffered today, he went through them himself. And we, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by Yahweh and afflicted. Yes, for our sins. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So Yeshua was the only person that was innocent, that was free of any guilt in the way of Yahweh, but yet, he suffered more than anyone else. Right? He suffered more than anyone else. Do we consider that? Right? And again, not just the night that he was betrayed and what he went through that night until the next day when he finally went to sleep, but his whole life. He was acquainted with grief. Remember, he wept for the children of Israel. Like, oh, if you were willing, if you were willing, I could actually help you. I can help you draw near to Yahweh, but you're not willing. You reject the teachings of, the, uh, of Yahweh. You, you murdered the prophets. You murdered everyone that Yahweh sent to you to save your life. Okay? Everyone, even the Savior himself. Yahshua wept. Acquainted with grief. But it says here, but by his stripes, we are healed. And so, there's a lot of definition for stripes. And I didn't get to look it up. In the Strong's, this particular, um, for this, per the definition for this particular word here. But I know, like, stripes identify, you know, what a person has accomplished, right? It shows that they've, they've done certain things, and so they're worthy of this particular type of status. So if you see, like in the military, you know, if you see someone like so many stripes, like, oh, he's been in the military this long, or he's accomplished this or that, so when we consider Yeshua Messiah and like this word here, stripes, you can consider what Yahweh says, how Yeshua is the ultimate result of the keeping of the law. You know, how Yeshua cared for the people. He healed the sick, right? He taught them the ways of Yahweh. He fed the multitudes. He did all of these different things for Yahweh's people. And then... He also taught the disciples to do the same thing. Remember how he was really trying to ingrain it in Kepha's mind. He said, Kepha, if you love me, then do what? Feed my sheep. Okay? Feed my sheep. Teach the way of Yahweh to the people. If you love me, if you want to be a part of this work, this is your job. 
Learn what to teach, then teach what to learn. Teach what you've learned, okay? This is what you have to do, Kepha. And this is the work that Yeshua did in his time period. And this is what he's still doing right now, working with us in these last days so that we can get this message throughout, throughout the entire world. And then the universe is the next assignment. But Yeshua, while he was on earth, he was acquainted with grief. Remember, he also looked at the apostles and said, will you two leave me? Right, will you also leave? Right, one of the men betrayed him. So this is what Yeshua was dealing with. Right, and remember what the scripture says um, concerning pastor. He said, I've labored and spent all of my strength for what? Nothing. That's what it feels like, you know, with the, with the constant bickering and fighting and backbiting and, you know, all of this slander and all of this trash, right? It's grievous to sacred spirit, the spirit of Yahweh. It's grievous. Remember, Lot rejoiced when he was in Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Oh, man, look at all this sin. No, he was tortured. It says he was tortured in his righteous soul. Right? All of that sin was grievous to him. And this is what Yeshua went through. Right? This is what those who desire the kingdom of Yahweh, this is what we go through. You know, we're sick and tired of sin. We want peace so bad that now I understand what Pastor was saying. That you're going to be begging for Yahweh to get here. You're going to be begging for it. You know, the world is a powder keg, ready to blow, ready to blow. But guess what? Yahweh's holding these things back for what? For us. For us. Are we ready for Yahweh to turn things over to us? Are we there yet? Or are we still bite, biting and devouring one another? Right? So Yeshua's memorial, is that the only... This, we can't treat Yeshua's memorial like the Christians treat Thanksgiving and Christmas when that's the day that they perform righteous deeds. But then the rest of the time, you know, they're selfish and, and so on and so forth. Right? Yeshua's memorial is a time that we should be refreshed, you know, being reminded of, of, of his example, his life, and the things that he did, you know, showing like, remember, this is my body. Right? This represents, you know, my life. This here is in service of one another that you have to do always. These should be, you know, like refreshing us, giving us a refreshing, you know, not just an act for the night and then we can go out and, and be deceived by our own thoughts and our own heart up until Yeshua's memorial the next year. You know, we can't conduct ourselves like that, man. You know, time is way too short, you know, for us to not learn these lessons and actually become the men that Yahweh wants us to be. Okay, we don't have time for that anymore. So by his stripes, we are healed by his works, you know, his mercy, his compassion. These teachings allow us to draw near to Father Yahweh. Isaiah 53, verse 6, verse 82, it says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, not Yahweh's way, not service to their fellow man, but going their own way and having fun. They're geared to rise up, to eat, to drink, and to play. And Yahweh has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And I keep stopping because when you really meditate on what Yeshua went through, because of our thoughts and our actions, and he didn't deserve it, how much, it's like we're guilty of all of the blood, like the scripture says, you know, all of the blood from Abel on up. You know, our, our training, our way of life, is why Yeshua went through what he went through and for us not to acknowledge that and then to try to fix our thoughts and our behavior it's like pastor said you're the same bastard that yanked out his beard you're the same bastard that spit in his face the same bastard that put the crown of thorns on his head we have to consider that if we're not fixing and changing our hearts and our minds it's no different than being the ones that actually physically did those things to him we have to consider the roles that we played that fulfilled these prophecies concerning the death of Messiah and the prophesied global destruction. We're responsible for that. But there's repentance. There's a changing of the hearts and mind if we allow it to take place. And that's why we're here in the Court of Appeal saying, Yahweh, I understand what I was doing. I'm through with that. You know, please help me to become just like you. Right? Not just in words. Right? Because what did Jacob say? Show me your faith by your words. 
I'll show you my faith by my works, right? So we should be speaking and living, speaking and living the way of Yahweh. And this is what we're going to be judged on. He, he, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was, he was taken from prison and from judgment. <coughs> Excuse me. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. He was stricken. Right? But he opened not his mouth at that particular time. Now, was Yeshua silent his whole life? <laughs> Absolutely not. Right? Absolutely not. When it was time for Yeshua to teach... He taught, you know, remember there was times when he said, I taught with you daily. I taught, I, I talked with you daily. I taught at the synagogues, you know, these things. But when it was time for him to remain silent, he fulfilled these prophecies. <clears throat> but Yeshua did what he was supposed to do. But in these last days, you know, the house of, Yah the house of Yahweh will not be silent. Okay. We are not going to be silent. We're going to proclaim these teachings forever. Once the house of Yahweh was reestablished, once, you know, once pastors and his brothers started their work, like Yahweh said, you know, let them foretell these things, it's been going ever since. And it's not going to stop. All right? So, you know, this, this is part of the joy that Yahweh and Yeshua have right now. Right? And they're, they're fully aware of what's going on in these last days, you know, Pastor, you, you know, you should joke about these things, too, when people would doubt, you know, him, you know. He said, you know, Yeshua's not up there like, Yahweh, did you, you see what he's doing down there? <laughs> you, see what you, you see what Israel's doing? You know, he said, window instead of window. You know how many people are going to fall away because he's an oki? Oh, have they not read where he will have a, 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 a stammering tongue? They didn't read that part? They, they didn't know that? And what difference does it make? The man is of quick understanding. Who here knew the things of Yahweh before pastor told us the things of Yahweh? We weren't even keeping the seventh day correctly. We weren't keeping the feast days correctly. I can easily turn this into something else. I know we don't have enough time for that. But all of these things are connected because, again, we have to believe what's written and put our trust in these things. We have to trust Yahweh. Right? We have to trust these teachings. And Yeshua was murdered so that we can have an opportunity to be here today. Right? He went through hell that night and he knew what he was going to go through. So imagine the mental anguish of knowing what he knew, how they were going to beat him throughout the night, how they were going to yank out his beard, you know, spit in his face, slap him, put the crown of thorns on his head and do all of those things that they did to him. He knew they were going to do that. He knew it and he still prepared himself to be a servant to us so that we can have life. These are the things we have to consider. We can't just, just wipe that out of our minds. This is why Yeshua's memorial is so important. And again, it cannot just be a one day event. We have to consider Yeshua in all, he's our high priest because he was strong enough to endure because Yahweh had this wonderful plan and said, look, there's going to be a man strong enough to, to bear the iniquity of all of you all of mankind who don't even know me yet. He's going to bear these things up so that you can have an opportunity to be a blessing to others. I mean, we cannot neglect what Yeshua did on our behalf. We can't forget it. And look, I'm, I'm, I'm almost out of time and I only read a few verses here. Continuing on here, I'm going to go down to uh, verse 85. Uh, verse 86 and this is Isaiah 53, 10. Yet his bruises or his willful sacrifice pleased Yahweh, for he was put to much grief. Now he was brought, he was brought the offering for sin. He will see his seed, that is the house of Yahweh. He will prolong days and the pleasure of Yahweh will succeed in his hands. I don't know if you caught that, but we'll, we'll bring out much more information on that later. Um, I'm going to have to skip ahead a whole lot here. But he continues to go on about what Yeshua went through. And then in Matthew chapter 26, is over in verse 91. Matthew 26, um, starting in verse 6, 
It says, now when Yeshua was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar. And then it shows how she anointed Yeshua and what that was for, you know, the, 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 the preparation for his burial. And, you know, Yeshua knew at that time that he was going to be beaten, he was going to die. But he didn't like, when you really consider the mindset that you have to have, you know, when it comes to the way of Yahweh, he knew what he was going to go through, but he also knew that it says in three days and three nights, he will rise and sit at the right hand of Yahweh. So you think he was really focused on the beating and the torture and what he had to go through? No, he was focused on, okay, I have to go through this and then I'm going to be a blessing to everyone else. I'm going to be at the right hand of Yahweh being able to help everyone else. And so as we're going through the greatest trouble or the greatest time period in the history of mankind, we're going through this, the financial woes, the, the, the physical woes, you know, all of our health issues. We're going through this so that when Yahweh turns things over to us, then we're going to make sure that no one else has to go through what we're going through right now. So we're doing the same thing that Yahshua did, not to that degree, but we have to have the same level of understanding. We're going through things that no one else has to go through so that no one else will ever have to go through it again. Right? This is our willful sacrifice. Right? But we can't, we can't act like we're the Messiah in this, right? But we are a light to the nations. But men, I'm out of time. All right? But consider these things and be mindful of Yahshua. Be mindful of the great plan of Yahweh. Be mindful of the witness who actually told you who your Savior is. Right, men, if you all please stand, I turn the class over to the great Kahan Shamil Hawkins. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Please be seated. I think this is the first time I've taught a class that was really pastor's prayer. Feels a little strange. Because I'm going to talk about different things within that prayer. I'm going to start at verse 120. Pastor says, if, we, if everyone will stand, we'll pray. Our Father in heaven, whose name is Yahweh, this is Israel Hawkins and all of your house. Father, all of your priests, all of your kahans, female judges, kohanas, all of the people who have, you have called into your house to be servants in these last days to your work and to each other, and eventually to the whole universe. That is a mouthful, a heartful, a mindful. We are those people that Yahweh has called from the very beginning. From the very beginning in his plan to be alive, to be in this house in this very time period. No other, this time period. To be called servants into his house, to be servants, just as Yeshua was a servant, because Yeshua has qualified to be a son of Yahweh. And that's what we're all qualifying to be, sons of Yahweh, servants to our Father's creation, our Father's house. Pastor goes on in 121, he says, I hold up before you, Father, the whole congregation, that you would know the things that ha they have gone through to be here this night. And he couldn't list everything. Everybody's gone through all sorts of things to be able to be here. You've seen the way they have suffered. And he goes on and he lists a couple of things, how they've lost jobs and the wicked things that they've suffered from people around them who hate your laws. You know, all of that hatred since we've been in the house of Yahweh that we see for Yahweh's laws affects us. 
since we've been called and answer our call, it's affect us in a very righteous way. But before that, it affected us in a very negative way. That hatred could be spread. It's like a wildfire. It's why war wasn't a big deal. You know, they've come, they stand before you this night as called out ones from the world. As we take this bread, Father, into ourselves, notice, we're so thankful for the servant who made it before us, our high priest, Yeshua, who will soon become ruler of rulers and will set jobs and authority throughout the universe. It will all be led by his house, the ones who you, Father, are training, and the completion is at hand. And in verse 122, there's, a, there's three times on three different lines, pastor says, we're thankful. We're thankful. He says, we know, Father, from the prophecies that it's only a matter of months until we will receive those offices along with Yahshua. There were many times that pastor taught us things without necessarily having a date, but he said, it's very short and this is going to take place. And we never saw anything. This is one of those things. That it's only a matter of months until we receive those offices. We were qualifying just like we are now. But we never got our test grade. We never got that score that we made. But did we believe without seeing? And continue to qualify, continue to get better by that time period that he said. He set forth because he knew. He saw it in the scriptures. Did we take that seriously? Did we gain that position that we could have? That was being offered to us. And if we didn't really think about it that way back then, we can now. You know, Pastor goes on, he says, we're thankful for that knowledge. And we're thankful, Father, for Yahshua. We're thankful that you were willing to give. That you were willing. We're thankful that you were willing to give your first begotten son, the only one who's made it so far at this time, to be our high priest, our leader, our defender, our mediator of the covenant. We know what Yeshua went through and how he suffered. He's become the perfect mediator. And we know you trained and bred him for that purpose. Now, we hold this up before you. Before all and before all the congregation here. We hold up your whole congregation. Who are willing to be like Yeshua. And are considering what they must do here this night to be like him. We're being presented in this prayer before Yahweh and Yahshua. Not that it didn't occur every time pastor prayed at this particular time, Yahshua's memorial, or but he presented us on many occasions to Yahweh. That's pretty awesome. Look at what he said about us. All the wickedness that we suffered. And then he goes on and he says, we bless you. You know, I often wondered about that for a long time. We bless you. How do we bless the creator of everything? It's pretty simple. Obedience. Keeping the law. Being righteous. Not outwardly, but inwardly, and let our works show that, as the Khan said earlier. 
We bless you and we praise you. We bless you for this bread. We bless you for Yahshua, our high priest. All the house of Yahweh praise you at this time and bless you through Yahshua, our high priest. Hallelujah, Yahweh. And we know that pastor said, hold on, don't eat. You know, wait, let's all get ours. I'm going to give the Kahans and the Kohan. We're going to get them all theirs, but we'll take it. We'll do this all together as one family. Everything he taught us and is teaching us has everything to do with building a family, his family. If he had a plan to build his family, do we have a plan to build our family? Because that family has to fit within his family. And he will always be the preeminent one. The world breaks out and separates families. Those divisions don't occur in the house of Yahweh. Not, in, not within Yahweh's righteousness. Pastor says, take, eat. Yeshua said, this represents his body that was broken this night for us. This is the renewing of our betrothal to Yeshua. And we do it every year. The renewing, because the wedding hasn't taken place. It's a time to think about. It's a time to realize and to remember the, the main priority. When I got here, the big thing that was being taught was, is the Holy Seed. That seed. We had to change in order to be able to have that. Or to become that. But this is the renewing of that betrothal vow we made with Yahshua. And Yisrael was presenting us again and again to our bride, our brother, Yeshua. Yachanan Mark 14, 23, And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they drank all of it. For he said to them, This represents my blood, of the covenant. That's the covenant we just read about in Hebrews. It's the great covenant of the law. This cup of wine represents the law going into your mind. Catch this. This cup of wine represents the law going into your mind, giving you that righteous spirit instead of that unrighteous spirit that you have had in the past. And the scripture continues, which is shed for many. And he says, if you'll stand our Father in heaven, whose name is Yahweh, this is Israel Hawkins again, with all your house, all your priests, your Kohans, female judges, Kohanas, and all the people who are gathered together before you as one family, one body. We hold up before you this night this wine that represents the blood of Yeshua. We fully intend to, as we take it into our bodies, our own selves, and we're ready to become servants of yours and of each other throughout all eternity. We know this represents your covenant that we're taking into our bodies. And this is the next thing I'd love you to catch. I, I hope you do. We know this represents your covenant that we're taking into our bodies and into our minds because the wine instantly enters the mind when you drink it properly. We know this and your laws, Father, at this time are instantly entering into our minds 
as we drank this wine and drink into our bodies your law and your prophecies at this time period. It's so amazing. He's telling us what we're about to do. We do it, and now he's telling us what we did. There were so many of his teachings that were this way. You ever been reading the book of Israel and you have this thought or something like it? Where was I when he said that? He teaches and he teaches and he teaches and we teach and teach. Level upon level, layer upon layer of righteousness allows us to have a different understanding. Never think... Oh, I just read that six months ago. I just read that three months ago. I don't need to read it again. That's not the case. We'll get something new each time. Because the reason we don't remember, when, where was I when he said that? It's because we didn't have the understanding to grasp what he said at the moment he said it. But we did a bit later. Because we put forth the effort the energy to learn his way. It's just amazing how Yahweh created us to be able to function this way. And anything contrary damages. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to damage what he's been creating us into all this time. Whether that's a week or whether that's, you name the number of years. We know our Savior suffered to shed this blood for us, and we, and we praise you and him also for be able, being able to do this. We praise you for being willing to put your son through that, this awful torture. Father, to pay the punishment for our sins also, we bless you and praise you in the name of our high priest, Yeshua, hallelujah, Yahweh. Brothers, all of the suffering, all of the pain, all of these things that we've endured since we've been gathered or called into the house of Yahweh, it's going to work this way with all of those in the heavens. We're proving to them that we can be trusted they can trust us to take care of them, to have their backs and their fronts and their hearts and their minds. We're proving to them nothing else matters. Just righteousness. Learning the laws, living the laws, applying the laws, understanding them on the deepest level because we're being taught them that way. They can trust us. They've suffered everything that's going on in the world right now. We're protected, but we're also pampered. I don't know that that's the word I want to use, pampered. We're, we're, uh, I don't have to go to work in the, in the world anymore. I don't have to be associated with those people every day. Eight hours a day, ten hours a day, twelve hours a day, whatever we used to work. I have no idea how people think. I can't even begin to imagine the mind of man that I see all of the things that they do on the news. Abortions, no matter what, I've even heard up to two years old after birth. Not just late term. I have no concept of what kind of heart takes to not understand life. Our worst day here in the house of Yahweh is light years ahead of the best day out there. And we can't forget those things. Yahweh put us in a perfect place because you're here. 
You make it perfect. Together, we make this the most perfect place anywhere. And those heavenly beings can see it. I don't want to let them down. I don't want to let Yahweh down or Yahshua. Look at what they've experienced, what they've done for us. Pastor goes on in verse 134. Yachanan 13.3, Yeshua, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come out of Yahweh and was going back to Yahweh, he got up from supper, laid aside his talit, then he took a towel and tied it around himself. After that, he poured water into a basin, then began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he had tied around himself. And after he had washed their feet, he put his talit back on and sat down again. And notice what he asked. Then he said, Do you understand what I have done for you? Do we take the time to think about what Yeshua has done for us? Not just at this night but his entire life. And we're to be like he is. To put ourselves down. To lift each other up. To prove to those heavenly beings we can be trusted. We understand what Yeshua did for us. This is a beautiful part about Yahshua. I know of no better thing than to give your life in service to someone else. Now there's a scripture to that effect, and most people think it means dying to give yourself. No, it's not dying to give yourself. Yahshua was willing to do that too, and we should be willing to do that if it comes down to that to save others. It meant to give your life in service to one another. There's no greater thing than there's no greater thing that you can possibly do. It's not just physical labor and doing your own thing. That's not what it's talking about. It means service in the house of Yahweh and doing the work in the house of Yahweh so that others will learn from your example. We're teaching those heavenly beings I've mentioned a few times. We're teaching them how to be like Yahshua by the way we are. The service makes it easier for everyone to enjoy the feast, the holy, con the righteous, the sacred convocation that Yah Yahweh has given us. Give your life in service to others. Do your part to make things go easier for others. And Yeshua said, you call me teacher and leader. And rightly so, for that is what I am. And that's as far as I have time for. So if you'll all please stand, I'd appreciate it. And we can bless Yahweh with our obedience. Father Yahweh, this is Conchmiel Hawkins along with these, your sons, Father, seeking permission to come before you in unity with the righteous Kahans of the house of Yahweh as seed of the last day's witness, the great Kahan Yeshua, Abel Hawkins, and through our most Ahab, the honorable high priest and king, Yeshua Messiah. We thank you, Father, for everything that you've allowed us to be taught throughout this sermon. Two weeks now, Father, it's, it's gone through. Four Kahans. We all shared our hearts with these men, Father. And pray that our hearts, our minds, are turned towards this kind of service. Or at least turning toward this kind of service. Strengthen us, Father, knowing that there's nothing strong about any one of us. Except your laws and how much we apply them into our lives. It's those laws that give us strength, Father. Your 613 laws. Continue to allow us to stay here, to be here,
to increase and improve in righteousness and in, in our understanding and, and having the knowledge, which is power, but to use it with wisdom that comes only from you, then it'll be righteous. We thank you, Father, for being with us. I ask that you continue to be with every one of us, Father, wherever we might be, whether we're here or somewhere else because we couldn't be here. Let us rejoice that your plan is coming to pass and we're a part of it and you've taken us out of this world. You've given us your spirit, your laws, the, the, the manner in which you live your life and all you've asked of us is to do the same, live our lives the way you do. Continue to strengthen us with this, Father, and we give you all honor and glory and praise and bless you through Yahshua, our high priest, and as the seed of the witness, Israel. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Thank you, men. Yahweh bless the rest of your Sabbath.